and like yeah 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 let's get started and then um, if they join they join Two motions are here now Also remember um, when you're um, not speaking, mute your mic so that it doesn't cause any um, echo. Repeats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, echo. Okay, let's get going for today. So guys, welcome to the podcast DeFi Chat Hub. Today is the first episode. Uh, basically, this podcast is going to be a bunch of different YouTubers. We're going to give our ideas across a bunch of different projects across DeFi, um, as well as a bunch of other stuff too. So welcome. Now, what I thought I'd do in the first episode was I was going to give, basically, let us all give an introduction to ourselves and our channels. So uh, the guys of each of his communities can uh, get to know the different YouTubers, and then we're going to get stuck into the topics for today. So I'll go first. I'm Jay. I'm the guy behind the channel DGen Chad. Now, I started my channel to basically cover up-and-coming projects because I found that too many YouTube channels concentrated on projects that I'd already done 10, 20, 50, 100x. Um, so I wanted to try and cover projects that we're still early on, like in the private and pre-sale phase, so people could uh, find opportunities to get into those projects early. I also do cover other stuff, such as airdrops and that kind of stuff and passive income protocols. So I'll leave it over to CT next, and he can explain his channel a little bit. Hello, guys. I'm CT. Uh, my channel, it's uh, basically just my journey in DeFi. Um, it's not for any financial advice. <laughs> it's just what I'm doing every day with what uh, projects I'm playing. Uh, when I start my channel, actually funny fact, I started uh, because of uh, Stable One was before to be Stable Fund. There was a ROI project and uh, people, they couldn't uh, take out their money. So I start to make some videos to show to people uh, how to take their money from uh, the smart contract. And I see people that was enjoying to watch them. So that's it. I start to make more and more videos. Simple as that. <laughs> All right. So who is next? <laughs> okay, bro. So next we'll go uh, Kuzin, who is with Crypto Channel 329. What do you do, yours cousin here speaking, Crypto Channel 329. So yes, I started the crypto journey in 2020. And um, as I started my journey, I decided to record my journey because, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTubers doing the same thing, starting the crypto journey, recording uh, everything they do, new projects, new coins, tokens, whatever. So I decided to do, to do the same thing. And uh, yes, on my channel, I present uh, DeFi projects, high risky projects, how do I adapt, how do I miners, um, new coins, new tokens. And also, I do educational videos, tutorials, and all that. And um, fun fact, I found CT in crypto when he posted a stable one, stable one, yeah, stable one video, how to withdraw uh, funds from the smart contract. And that's how we met. That's how we subscribed to each other and got in touch ever since. So yeah, basically, that's what, that's what I do. So I do educational videos. I show my crypto journey and show new, new projects, new um, tokens, and much more. So yeah, that's basically me. Awesome, so we'll move on to Nana Crypto next. Hey everyone, um, basically I started my channel February this year and inspiration was, uh, it's uh, Yada Crypto, he's my mentor in other, you know, in marketing we work together and he like share his access in crypto and i just was curious about learn about crypto so i started my own channel started to do research about different projects and decided to witness my journey within crypto myself you know all the you know success and failure 
uh, and you know whatever it's happened just to go through and witness on my channel so and with that start to record like upcoming projects as well as it's you know every day we can get tons and tons of different projects so not all of them can be exposed like some you know very successful one so just give booster to those projects as well and this is it this is how it all started and just growing day by day i would say cool great so moving on we'll go with patrick hey guys uh thank you so much i'm patrick uh most of you guys knows me by uh, zamba cash flow so actually i created my channel a uh, long time back uh, before I used to do videos in French because I wanted to attract a French community. And then we used to be in a project called AI marketing. All right. So, and then after that project, and I've decided to move on, not doing YouTube anymore. And I started working together with uh, DeFi dudes. Most of you know him as he's also a big YouTuber. He, was one of the best, uh, first person to actually introduce us to stable funds and all that. So I've been working with him and Craig for a couple of years, and then he actually gave us the courage to go into YouTube. So I have decided to go back to my channel, and from there I've been sharing um, multiple projects and either it's tokens, new tokens coming up, new dubs, so all these crazy and dangerous projects which we're getting to. So, and the most important thing which I wanted to do is to try and cover trusted projects, not just covering everything which comes and go. So, yeah, that's where we are. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. No problem, bro. So, I think we got one more. Yeah, Abdul. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, Abdul. I know we got two. We got herbs uh, uh, on top as well. I'm going to actually have to unmute you guys because it looks like I didn't give you guys admin permission. So I'm going to give both of you guys admin and now so you should be able to speak. And then some top afterwards. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah. Hello. Uh, so I'm Abdul Rock Crypto. Uh, it's nice being here. Um, my crypto journey actually started in the affiliate marketing uh, with one of my so my colleagues. I'm from the UK and he, um, CD Rocks, you may have seen him as another YouTuber. We started off with like a gaming project and we just worked together and then we went into so like YouTube. Um, it's I've been around since December last year, November, December last year. I've really enjoyed the YouTube um, sort of like project covering. I do reviews on my channel. Um, I have been doing reviews on different miners, um, just the success and failures um, as regards to meeting different people as well, learning from other big YouTubers as well that I've um, come across. Um, now I'm at a stage where I'm just trying to find some long sustainable platforms um, on there. So that's that's what my YouTube channel is about, just to try to find for those types of um, projects to, for my viewers, really, that's all. Hello, guys. Okay. okay. Uh, and moving on last, we have uh, Suntop. Go ahead, Suntop, introduce yourself and your channel. Hello, guys. Uh, this is Suntop, and my channel name, name is Suntop as well. And I really appreciate for creating this platform for all the YouTubers. Uh, this actually encourages us to, you know, make it better and help each other uh, grow our channel, share ideas. And my crypto journey started uh, back when the COVID started. Um, so I see that most of the people uh, over here, yeah, so it started back uh, during COVID times. And when we started, I, I was investing mostly in altcoins. However, I came to know about the DGEN coins, the coins that get launched every, every day, like hundreds of coins. And I came to know little by little that you can make 100x, 1000x out of those coins. And uh, I started my journey over there. I was able to make, uh, you know, 100x uh, on some coins. And then for a few months, I tried, you know, like every day, I spent about 10 to 12 hours, I think, like you guys. Then I came to know that I think I should share this idea with people, how they're able to take advantage of it. And that's how I created the YouTube channel. And once I uh, created a couple of videos, it, it was pretty 
since I know ins and outs about how the place works, I think the video was quite uh, received quite well. And the project that I was able to put in, uh, some of the project did very well. So by chance or by just the information that I was able to share. So yes, uh, I, I really appreciate again for this platform and looking forward to the platform. Thank you. Okay, now we have it. I think that's everyone is give a nice little brief introduction to the channel. So uh, just before we go ahead and talk about the topics for today, um, I have now unmuted the um, public group. So if any of you guys who are listening in, I know this is our first podcast today and we only actually made the public group today. So I know there's not many people in it so far, but if any of you, do, any of you guys do have some questions, then I have unmuted the chat in the public group. You can ask your questions there. And then as the podcast goes on, we can uh, answer your questions as well. So moving on for the first topic of the day, I guess with everything that happened yesterday with Stable Fund and Wealth Mountain, I wanted to touch a lot on that. Obviously, a bunch of different YouTubers here on their own little journeys that they've just been describing. And it's going to be interesting to get everyone's opinion on what just happened. So um, did anybody listen to the uh, voice message that Michael left in, well, uh, in the Stable Fund chat a couple of hours ago? Yeah, Why I think everybody is listening all the pin messages from Stable Fund on this point. <laughs> yeah, so CC, what's, what's your opinion on the last message that was, uh, the last voice message that was put in the, um, in the Stable Fund chat? I think everybody, we have different opinions about the Stable Fund. Uh, because I was uh, invest also in their first project, Stable One. I don't know how many people they know about it. When they have the problem with the V1, I was one of the person what I get a refund. So I don't know. Yeah, Should I would, I I would say. To... I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult to say if he's going to do it or not. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd say the one thing um, that I sort of, um, that I can highlight out of what he just put in that last voice message um, was the fact that he's now saying that there's going to be a form on the website about people that want to go over into V2. Now, uh, yesterday during the AMA, he was um, very adamant that, like, the reason for everything that happened was, like, the protocol, like, got too big and there was too much panic and too much selling at once and the, and the protocol couldn't support it. Um, so he was highlighting that during V2, it needs to be smaller with a smaller set of, you know, of, of um, private investors in order to be able to uh, sustain itself. But then today's message that he um, put out to people, it seemed to me as if it's almost too easy to get yourself a spot on V2. And they're just going to, if they make it too easy to get a spot in, in, the, in the private part of V2, then in my opinion, it's just the project is just going to go down the same path again and we're going to have the same problems. I don't know if anybody else has a different opinion on that. Yeah, I heard um, the voice note as well. I believe everybody who was invested in stable fund heard the voice note and been checking the pin message every single day. And uh, yes, I do believe he's going to refund the people that he's entitled to a refund because... In, he did in a past, so stable, stable one back in January this year. You know, at some point they had that about, I think it was seven million or eight million Matic in a smart contract. And back then the smart, the Matic price was 170, 140, between 140 and 170. So there was a lot of money in the smart contract and um, the smart contract had the issues and a lot of people were unable to withdraw. And they said, okay, uh, people are not would not able to withdraw. I will issue a refund. And usually, DeFi. If you've been there, for, if you've been on DeFi for quite some time, you know that it's very hard to see a guy saying, "Hey, I'm going to refund you." You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of unique. And from there, people start to build trust on on the on Michael and the Stable Fund team, Stable One team. And then from there, they build V2, V3, V4, and, and then ultimately the stable funds. So what happens with stable funds? 
honestly, I don't really know what the FUD was all about because, you know, the people who were invested in stable fund were making money every day, 1.5% every day. And regardless of the FUD or no FUD, you know, I don't understand why people decided to cash out and, um, you know, start panicking because, you know, either if there is no bot let's say there is no bots in in, in, in behind, behind the scenes doing the trades okay it, it doesn't matter because all three smart contracts well apart from matic all smart contracts were growing every day you know because people were compounding investing day by day and uh, obviously every single project will have furthers and usually furthers are those ones that invest less than a thousand bucks okay that's the truth they invest one hundred dollars and then they start feeling like oh my damn i've deposited one hundred dollars i'm not i'm not gonna show you if i'm gonna i'm not sure if i'm gonna i don't know why when this guy he deposit one hundred thousand dollars and uh, he's taking all the money out so they start panicking and they start spreading fear and usually you know when one do this the other one follow and then it will have the domino effect and yes in my opinion i think that he's gonna refund the people that is entitled to a refund and um, in regards to v2 i believe that he will do some changes in regards to um, how to invest um, locking period and all that but you know uh we we don't really know for sure we just gotta wait and see what's gonna happen Yeah, de definitely. So uh, what I can say personally uh, regarding that is uh, uh, when you look into the first project which you launched uh, back in the days, so whatever they promised, they delivered. And when you look at stable, stable Fund itself, they've been delivering since day one, all right? So what I can say regarding the owners and especially Michael himself is, is short-tempered. So it of people asking questions so it's not really a problem of someone asking a question when they're having uh, an issue or something like that so for me being a leader being the owner of the project you should be able to handle every single one and of course we know that people who invested less they are the one who asking so much questions about the project they're not sure if they got I or things like that but uh... In regards with uh, a form on the website, everyone should be able to actually uh, uh, request the refunds or you can actually join the V2. I don't really think it's really a good idea to have that option for someone to go to V2 because now it's going to give easy access to everybody to go while they say that they're going to have a limited number of uh, people joining the V2. So. Probably for me, what I think they could just leave a form for someone to apply to get the refunds and then apply to go into the V2, all right? Probably, uh, I don't know, not like not getting your refunds and then you just apply for V2. So if you only apply for V2 without getting your refunds, meaning you already qualify for the V2, so they're holding your money still, so meaning you are already in the V2. So. Yeah, that's all I can say, but uh, the guy have been delivering and I, I have trust in, in them. I have trust in Michael, he's been delivering. Um, he never actually rags since uh, stable one. So if they say they're going to refunds, that would be an amazing uh, thing which you can do. So if you can get your refunds and get access to apply for V2, that would be great. And then they can do selection of people who can go to the V2 if they want to. So yeah. Okay, I, I've got some to add, but um, does anybody else want to give their opinion quickly? Nope, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I pretty much agree with everybody. Um, everybody uh, you know, the fact that he um, refunded people on previous projects and the, the way that he posed those smart contracts, you know, everything points out that he, do, he, he does want to refund people, at least their initial investments. Um, but I would say that what has happened, um, looking at also what happened in Wealth Mountain uh, on, on, on the same day, it definitely does expose um, a slight side of um, like a Ponzi scheme a little bit with the project because 
the um, basically what they were saying was they had to pause the smart contracts, otherwise they were going to keep draining to the point where they weren't going to be able to pay people out even their initial investments back. And if that was the case, and there wasn't enough money to pay everyone their initial investments back, plus the money that they should have been compounding over time, that means that this project, at least to an extent, now I'm not saying that there wasn't any trading being done at all, and maybe there was some trading bots, but at least to an extent, the project was running on um, on the basis that new investors coming in with new money and old investors holding their uh, position. And so they're moving over into Wealth Mountain. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys um, were invested in Wealth Mountain or, or, or heard what happened. What was, was any of you guys invested in that? Yes, uh, I think most of us, we put money in Wealth Mountain. Problem what was, there was like uh, three wallets but they were saving around uh, 200,000 BNB invested. And uh, when I find out about that, I was uh, waiting like a chicken to get uh, my 31, 32 days so I can take out my money and run away. Because uh, if that person that was getting us on the 31 day, of course, when they was pressing the redraw, it's going to drain the project. And I mentioned it in my first video, it's going to be a straight ROI, high risk, high rewards, basic Ponzi, because they cannot take 10% uh, what they get for uh, any deposit and make it in such a way so they're going to be able to pay people what uh, they're going to invest uh, 1 million, 2 million. It's almost impossible. You cannot make from 10%. Uh, to pay two millions or three millions, how much you need uh, to take out more than that in order so you can do some trades to make some uh, investments in different pools or mm, these kind of things. This is my opinion about. Wealth yeah, Mountain. yeah. Uh, I mean, for sure. Like, I guess the difference between Wealth Mountain and a stable fund is that Wealth Mountain, you know, they're offering this like four or five percent per day um, return, and you can see exactly where. Wealth Mountain are investing their funds, and you know for a fact that they're not making enough yield to be paying these people this amount of money. So the project was moving along um, by the fact that there was new investors coming in helping to support it, right? Whereas Stable Fund claim that yield that they're paying out to everybody, the 1.5% per day, is coming from the revenue made by the trading bots. So I guess that's the difference between the two. Um, but yeah. I guess, is it, does anyone else have, a, yeah, have another um, opinion on that? Wealth Mountain, for me, was a straight ROI DAP from the beginning. A little bit different from the the, the usual uh, ROI DAP, but for me, it was always a straight ROI DAP. And uh, that kind of project, you have to get in when they launch, okay? So you have to get in when they launch so you can make the most of it. Because if you get in 30 days later, the guy they jumped in on the day one, once he hit day 30, you know, he's going to be on, what, 3% or whatever, but he's going to be way ahead of you because you still have 30 days to go. By the time you reach day 30, he's going to be on day 60. And then from day 50 onwards, you're getting 5% a day. So if you invest like uh, 10,000 and your small guy only invests 1,000, uh, by the time the guy gets to day 50, he's going to get 5% a day. Okay, so... So you just imagine how much money he's gonna get, and uh, Wealth Mountain was just was just a TikTok bomb because when I reached day thirty, so I was talking to CT as well, and when we reached, us, us, I said to him, when I reach day thirty one, I'm out because sooner or later this this thing is gonna collapse because there were a few wallets with a lot of money, a lot of investments, and they were in very early so they they took the most of it because they they rolled with the project all the way to 50 days and beyond and then they got to a point they were like okay let's let's take this money out and um i took my money out so i unstake everything on day 31 or day 32 and then a few days later um the smart contract went from two point i think it was 2.2 or 2.3 mil all the way to 1.7 so i was like this is it but for some reason the contract grew a little bit but you know eventually it would collapse because you know there is no way that the smart contract could sustain 
um, paying 1.5% every day to a lot of investors and uh, without no new money coming in. So eventually uh, the big guys, the big wells decided to withdraw and you know there was the domino effect that everybody started to cash out and eventually it went from 1.7 mil to zero in about what five ten minutes it was really quick so yes straight uh roi dap and uh, yeah the ways they they could uh, change the wealth wealth mountain or wealth mountain on a v2 is um, just stick to one percent a day or even one to two percent a day max and that's it you know max out your wallet so once you reach like day 50 for instance and um or day let's say day 100 if you go to uh, two percent a day you make 200 percent on your investment and if you want to continue earning your rewards you know just uh, make a new deposit or compound or whatever you'll have to take action okay because um wealth mountain there there were no limits okay so if you were in from day one the project lasted all the way to 111 days you know imagine how much money you would have made if you were from day one all the way to day 111 okay but yeah that's just my opinion and uh, wealth mountain um has nothing to do with uh, stable fund in my opinion stable fund uh, has a good reputation so i really believe in the project stable fund uh wealth mountain surprised me i didn't think it would last that long but it did and um, you know even though i didn't make much profit i made profits i'm happy with my profits and I'm glad I cashed out on day 31 or day 32. Yeah, you played uh, you played that one very well, mate. Does anyone else have any opinions on Wealth Mountain? Okay, so um, yeah, I guess f from that, what what we can gather, I guess all of our opinions are kind of the same in that. Uh, with these projects, um, the important thing is just to be there at day one. Because um, if you're that guy getting in a couple months afterwards and you're you're stuck in your investment for over a month, then you're going to be the guy who's um, who's um, stuck holding his bag at the end when there's no uh, contract balance anymore. So, um, obviously, um, just like stable fund, uh, with, sorry, with the success of stable fund, we've now seen the um kind of the growth obviously it happens um all the time in DeFi. once there's like a real a one really successful and inno innovative project um then people start to fork them right and start to do copies and very similar projects so we've kind of seen that now with stablecoin um with optimus and maybe three or four different projects that are kind of doing the same thing where they are um using the money investing the protocol then you um trading with that money and then the revenue of that is then going out to pay people a certain um apy like in optimus's example it's one percent per day now optimus is a little bit different because um uh, optimus actually rebases and it uses the money generate the revenue generated from the trading to then pay out those rebases um it doesn't require to con um to interact with any sort of decentralized um, dashboard or anything like that. Everything is done automatic with a rebase. And um, it also relies on the price of the native token. Opt at the moment, it's on, on the version 3, Optimus 3. So if there is a dump in the token price, then obviously your investment will also go down. So it's a little bit different in that aspect. Does anybody have any differentiating, uh, differentiating opinions about yeah, Optimus compared Optimus to stable is funds? way, way different and uh you know you will have to really do your own research to figure it out how optimus operates and uh, how everything works behind the scenes because you know one thing is for me coming publicly and say hey i built this project has a bot trading for us so all you got to do is buy this token and hold it because every 24 hours we're going to do a rebase and uh, uh, basically we'll compound your um your 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 holding tokens okay but um if you do a little bit of research behind the scenes and see okay where the funds go uh who is holding the big bags and you know i don't really want to talk about it because i don't want to say things that i shouldn't say but all i can say is uh, you should really do your own research before you um 
uh, invest in Optimus or any other project because um, some some devs will say, okay, there is a bot behind the scenes, and everybody will believe because stable funds say there is a bot behind the scenes, and then um, now everybody can have a project with a bot behind the scenes. So we don't really know until we do our own research and you know take the smart contract, see where the money is going, what it, what was happening behind the scenes. Until you will believe that. Uh, there is a bot uh, behind the scenes, so you just have to do your own research and um, take your own conclusions. I don't really want to say much about it because I don't want to create FUD or say the wrong things or might mislead someone. So what I would say is um, always do your own research, check the background is happening, check uh, who has the most uh, tokens in the wallet and how that person or that people um, got to the point that where they hold lots of tokens and all that but yes um like michael said a few probably a few months back um in the, in the near future we will see projects coming along and say hey uh, here's a new project with a bot behind the scenes he said that and we actually seen that so it's like dino dino bsd when it came out probably two months two three months ago um, Dyn was a really success platform, an ROI DAP, straight ROI DAP. And because of its success, you know, we've seen in a space of like two, three weeks, more than 20 Dino folks. It was crazy, okay? But, you know, the thing is, some of the devs behind the, the project, they had good intentions, but majority, majority of them, they just wanted to rug, okay? They put high taxes and back doors so people would invest thinking that hey this is a dino fork with a higher apr so we're going to make money but in the end you just invest and lose your money because uh, they were forks and they were designed to you know rug you and you know after after soccer bust i i gave a word heads up to my people in my community saying hey do not invest in dino forks because eventually they will rug or they won't have the same success as Dino BUSD. So uh, yeah, I guess we are seeing the same trend now with bots. You know, stable fund came along, and then Optimus now uh, CGT, and many more will come in the future. But yeah, that's just my opinion. We should always do your own research, regardless of what people say on YouTube or you know whatever the word of mouth. Always do your own research and see what's going on behind the scenes. So yeah, that's me done. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, what I can say is uh, in DeFi, we actually experience like uh, it's like seasons of things. So <laughs> it's a minor season, then it comes uh, dynamic box, bot season. So we kind of need bot season with whatever which happened with stable funds. So for me, I can see that we're going to an end of, of a bot season. And there will be another uh, like bug which is going to come and people are going to jump into it. So when, when in regard with Optimus, so uh, what I can say is it's actually a great project. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people have made so much money and especially those who were in into the beginning. All right. So what I can say for the community, everybody who's listening right now is um, us as YouTubers, most of the time we come with projects showing you things which we believe it, it could be successful and it, you can actually earn some money out of it. All right. Some, they could be paid promotion. Some, they're not paid promotion. You just like the project and you're like, okay, let me share it with my community. And you also do your research, but our research are not enough. So it's always important for everybody to do their own research. Really, really important. And only invest money which you can afford to lose. Don't go and sell your kidney, mortgage your house, and I don't know, take a loan so that you can get into DeFi. Anything can happen. We can all experience it with whatever which happened with uh, stable funds. I know so many people, they actually took loans and get into the projects because they could see how sustainable it was. and they've been delivering everything which they promised. So what we see and what is happening behind, it's totally two different realities, which we cannot predict, all right? So please guys, always invest money, which you can afford to lose because all these projects are high risk and 
it's not a must for you to invest on every project which someone posts on YouTube because there's not a lot of trusted YouTubers out there. Few of them are trusted because you can just get paid and promote anything, right? Just to get, just to get the money and then uh, that's it. So you just have to be careful out there and I know how it feels. I've been also an investor, a smaller investor. I started from scratch all the way up up to where I am right now. I've been rugged. I, I lost my entire wallet with so much money in. So I know exactly what's really happening. Even though as a YouTuber, we we are the most exposed, I can say, to this rug and things like that. Because I've just give you an example of myself. When, when I got hacked, it actually happened through a PDF. Someone sent me a PDF. Can you please review this project for me? So when I open the PDF, I'm actually downloading something, a software onto my laptop and everything was gone. So us taking that risk to expose, to actually promote these projects, it's really crazy. And doing our own research, most of the time we miss a lot of things. So do your own research. Optimus is a good project. And uh, there's so many people holding thousands of bugs right now. So. You just have to be careful because you don't have, you, there's no way you can control the people who are holding so much money. So once they feel like, okay, it's enough for me and they decide to withdraw, everybody will start withdrawing. We could see that with stable funds. So it's really crazy. You just have to, once you get your ROI, just play with the, with the, with the extra cash which you get from the platform. Yeah, that's all I can say on my side. Yes, so okay, so, oh, sorry, <clears throat> sorry. So <clears throat> regarding the Optimus, all right, the most simple way it's how to see any type of project, not only Optimus. You need to put a small amount of money or a big amount of money, depends how much you can afford to lose. You double your money or you make a profit of 50%. The best thing to do is to take your initial back. It's the most simple way in order to to be sure you're not gonna lose money, you know, because many people, they see many YouTubers, they put in a project 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 in one project, and they say, yeah, I should uh, get a loan in order to put this money in a project. It's wrong, I'm, I'm trying sometimes in my videos to don't show to people how much money I put in a project, you know. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to don't show it, especially when it's a new project and you want to show to everybody, look, I'm, I'm joining it, I trust the project, you know, or you share your, your personal opinion, you know. But some people, they don't understand, they should play with less money, you know. I mean, uh, it's no shame to invest in a project $10 and make a $5 profit and enjoy your Starbucks from the profit what you make in a DeFi, because DeFi... It's like a lottery. It's like a casino. You need to understand uh, how to play. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I, oh, sorry, Abdul, go on. Speak. Yeah, I just want to share my experience. Uh, I've been listening to you guys about, you know, it's definitely money that you need to sort of like invest that. Um, you know, you're caught to lose. Like I, I've been with uh, CGT. Um, a lot of you guys would have seen what happened to CGT. I think the the developer, um, from what he said, because he, I think he's fully transparent because he's always said it. Um, he couldn't trade. He didn't get the so like a license for uh, for the trading. So he has to wait to get that license. It's going to take him six months, etc. And it's going to cost him a lot of money. But what he's done now is he's got uh, prospect and mining, and with with this, he's he's always updated people. Um, to tell him what he's doing. If you go to his Discord or his actual channel he's, he's done that he's actually what i've seen from youtubers a lot of other youtubers have tried to put him down to say this is not legitimate anything like that some of the like i think you mentioned about uh wealth mountain and some of the other projects um having bought he's actually shown that he's going to have mining which is i think he's either going to do today or tomorrow actual mining facility but he's actually going to do a video of where he's going to be doing these my um his mining setup um, so to find, you know, trusted project, I think, I don't know what you guys think of it, but I think PMG, um, where you earn 2%, it's quite, um, like I say, legitimate in my opinion. 
because there's a few YouTubers that I've seen. <laughs> I saw the stuff that I've seen. It's just like, you know, it's it's like Muhammad Ali versus Tyson, as I described. Uh, it's um, sort of boxing match to see whether this is legitimate or not, whether he's doing live trades. I think these types of projects that the developers doing this one is legitimate uh, in that sense. There is a few projects that, you know, they say they do bots, they say they, they, they've got this, but you don't actually do it. So I agree with Patrick, you've got to do your so like research due diligence because they could be fantastic projects, but if you don't know what's happening in the background, how long would it last? That's what I would say. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a nice point. And yeah, we've had some really um, good advice there from a few guys about, uh, you know, crypto security and stuff like that. Um, I guess that's also a topic that we're probably not going to have time for today, but definitely in a future episode of the podcast. Uh, we could definitely spend more time around crypto security and I'm sure all of us have got some, um, you know, really good tips that we can give to some guys about that. Um, I guess what I just want to do next, we do have a couple of questions in the chat that I wanted to, us to answer. Um, yeah, so for those of you guys that are in here, if you jump into our public Telegram chat, you can ask us questions there and we will answer them. Um, Greg was asking if the... If there were traders, why aren't they trading now to boost the funds while they are while while they are not being drained? So I guess he's referring to stable fund when we were talking about stable fund earlier. Um, I, well, with that question, I guess the problem is none of us are affiliated with stable fund or none of us are a part of the team. So I guess we can't really give you any answers to why the traders aren't doing certain things at certain times. Um, if you do listen to the most recent voice note, um, in the stable fund community that he's pinned. Um, he does state that the traders were taking a couple of days off. Um, I guess because of what happened yesterday, um, they're having a couple of days off. And then after that, um, I personally can't give you any information on it because I, I don't really know, but maybe some other guys have got an answer to that. Sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the question. Um, he was asking if, um, why are the, because with stable fund, they have traders behind it, right? Who are doing the trading and he wants to know why the traders not trading now, even though the contracts are paused. Uh, this is difficult for us to know. We can, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly what we I said. Can yeah. just talk about what Michael, he was saying in the MA, they say the guy, he was not able to make a profit <laughs> for the last three days. <laughs> and uh, from the message what yeah, I understand today, uh, uh, the yeah, traders, they're that... tired, you know. So. Oh, yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what he said, right? He said they're taking two yeah, days so off. Yeah, so according to Michael, he yeah. said that uh, so everybody's looking... having a break, a pause, so, because uh, I believe that he enough. and his team members were uh, under a lot of pressure for the past few days. I haven't really, I don't really pay much attention to, to attention to telegram groups because you know most of the time it's just crap always asking the same thing oh what happens after 28 days how do do why do i do this how do i that oh, come on come on man if you are investing in a project you should do your own research before you you know come to the telegram group and ask silly questions because all those questions that people majority of the people were asking they are on the website on the website faq so if you go there you will find every answer okay but you know a lot of people are too lazy to read so they just go to tg group and ask the same question so that's the reason why i don't spend much time reading messages and uh I really didn't understand what the FUD was all about, but, um, you know, I believe that those guys, they were in such a, under pressure that, you know, from the previous EMA, AMA, Michael was really upset. He was angry <laughs> and uh, he was right. You could, you could tell that he was raging. And uh, yeah, I believe that they, they definitely having a break right now because if there were people actually trading, you know, trading, it's time consuming. You have to do lots of technical analysis. You have to check what's trending, what's not trending, what what's the trading volume and all that. So it's not easy doing day trades. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with millions, it's it's a big deal. So you have to be focused and you have to be on, on, on top of your game. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to lose money, money and, you know, there will be no revenue for anyone. 
And uh, yes, I believe at the moment everything is at standstill. So the funds must be, last time I've checked, it were in a, in a wallet. So the 10,000 BNB and I think it was 70 mil uh, BUSD were in, a, in one single wallet. So I, I haven't checked it yet since then. So I don't know if the funds are still in the same wallet or they shifted around. But, you know, I believe that Michael will... They move the funds. Yeah, so I believe Michael eventually will say, hey, uh, he says tomorrow, tomorrow he will give us some news with, with a form to apply for the form for, for the refund or to join the V2. But yeah, in the long run, I believe that he will do the right thing and the refund people because at some point, Matic was, Matic contract balance was around three point something mil. Uh, BUSD smart contract was around um, 25 mil, I think was the, the, the highest peak. And um, BNB, I think was 11 or 12,000 BNB in a smart contract. So they had a lot of money. So they had a lot of money. They could split for 10, 20 guys and everybody would be settled. Okay, so they didn't rug, they didn't run away. TG was still up and running. So I believe that he will do the right thing and... Um, refund people and crank up the v2 yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah let, let's hope then um well i think you know one thing we can all agree on there is that we all seem to have the same opinion on that um like crypto has trends, right? So usually there's, there's one new innovative project that comes, uh, is a success, and then you start to see the forks and uh, the similar projects that come. And I guess we're kind of in that phase now with the trading bot stuff. Um, so, you know, you've got to start being very careful because um, there's going to be some rug pull projects coming out at the moment. Um, and if you are getting in projects, make sure you're getting in there on the first day because if you're that guy who's jumping in after 30 days, then it's going to be much higher risk than, um, you know, if, if, if you were to get in on um, day one. Um, so that kind of brings me into the uh, next topic that I wanted to talk about. And so uh, considering now maybe we are kind of at the end of that wave of the uh, trading bot um, um, protocols, um, do we see any new upcoming trends in DeFi at the moment of projects that are performing well? Now, I've seen a couple of you guys invested in uh, Pizza Tower and some of the forks of Pizza Tower. Um, have any of you guys got any opinions on that and whether you think that, uh, or if you guys can see any new trends in the market at the moment? Yeah, so personally, I can say, uh, the pizza tower is actually what is coming. That's what is going to be more popular. As you can see, we have already, I don't know, three or four folks already of the project. So people just need to be careful with uh, whatever projects which are coming out, and especially this time of the year, with the experience which I have in DeFi, when we, we started going to toward the end of the year, especially to December, there will be so many rug pull which are going to come because people they just want to come release projects copy something and then release it and take money from people because they just want to have money to go and enjoy and celebrate with their family not knowing that they're actually killing someone else on the side so it's something which we should look into um just you don't have to invest in everything which you see and uh, sometimes i do i do blame big youtubers most of the time when they come with some of the project and they show you how they actually invest uh, hundreds hundred of thousands of BUSD on a project and you don't even do research and you look like, okay, yeah, if you can invest 1 million in this project, then I can also go in. But you forgetting that you've been there probably since the beginning and it's been compounding to reach to where it is. So it's something we should also think of and consider and especially at the end of this year, so many things are gonna happen. So you just have to be careful and always use a ledger. If you don't have one, I will recommend you to go get one for yourself because things are going to go crazy for the next few weeks which are coming until January. Yeah. I just wanna mention as well, uh, you know, for many people, if you try to check up on some kind of new project or so on, 
if you bond your wallet uh, with that, uh, you know, contract, try to unwrapped you know it just costs few cents but you know it's better safe than sorry you know to be protected just unwrap your wallet from any of those suspicious projects after you checking them out or investing because you know they just swap your wallet and that's it so yeah just be careful guys yeah and uh, in order to revoke contracts you have to be careful as well because um a lot of these scammers sometimes they make uh phishing links or a fake websites uh, that mimic some of these websites used to revoke contracts and you can end up clicking actually on a phishing link and connecting your wallet to something that would actually drain your funds so um the way i always recommend um do, um you know, if you want to go into a D-Bank or, you know, any of, the, any of the apps which revoke contracts, is I always think the safest way to find the real link for a website is to search for that project on CoinMarketCap. And on its page on CoinMarketCap, you will find in the link section a link to the website. And that way you will know that that will be the official website to the... Um, otherwise, sometimes when you just search for it on Google, there can be phishing links yeah, that are hidden within it. the you Google searches. Sometimes right. scammers so have been very good at being I able to research, get the links you know, hidden in there you in you one of the top Google. searches on, on, and, um, on, on uh, back Google. Back then, when uh, farms were trending, uh, you could see lots of uh, uh, pancake swap forks, uh, copies. And if you click on the wrong one, sometimes the, the whole links looks good. But, you know, just, uh, just to let it looks a little bit different. And that's just... Uh, um, an easy trick you click on it connect your wallet and that's it your funds are gone but yeah back to the subject that you mentioned so i believe the new trend now is uh, play to earn like pizza towers so even though pizza tower came out um first of september this year you know quite a while ago uh we saw another one the restaurant tower or something something like along along those lines and now we are seeing that many other projects are forking the pizza tower because the pizza tower um, is a successful project. You know, it's been live for more than 40 days, 40, 45, 46 days now, or even more. And it's doing really well because the people are seeing that, yeah, pizza tower is, is paying and it's still up and running. So people decided to fork just like Dino Fork, Dino BUSD when it came out. Dino BUSD when it came out, you know, was a really good project. And people were like, okay, Dino is doing well, so we're going to fork this project. So I believe for the next few days or probably one or two weeks, you're going to see many more pizza tower forks coming out because that's the new trend. So miners are gone. ROI dubs, they tried, but they didn't stick around much. And uh, we saw a few bots, uh, bot project projects, and now we are seeing play to earn the pizza tower forks. So yeah, pizza tower will continue for a few more days or probably two weeks or so. And then something new will come along. Matic Kingdom, I think, is one that's just recently come out. Where you play it in, you've got to build kingdoms um, on that one. So you're right, definitely. There's a, there's a lot of uh, play to earn ones. I think that will be coming out in the next sort of like um, projects instead of the miners. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, I guess with whilst we're currently maybe in that trend at the moment. Um, if you are going to get in the, one of the projects, you know, make sure you're getting in, the, in at the start and, um, you know, just always keep in mind that these things aren't going to last forever. These trends don't last forever. So, um, you know, it might only last a few more weeks and then, you know, we might be moving on to something else. So everything is very, you know, time dependent, basically. Yep. <laughs> there are some projects out there what... Uh they are designed in such a way to last for longer term uh, a few days ago i was i make a video regarding the uh, far, uh, farmer forger it's a uh, it's a big youtuber in the back of the of the platform and i think patrick you can uh, talk more about the platform if he wants Yes, yeah, yeah, I can uh, definitely talk about it because I'm also part of the team. So I know exactly what's going on, what's happening. So when you look at that, uh, before we reach to the farm of fortune itself, 
back in the days, we used to have so many rugs in miners and, and things like that, all right? And uh, uh, Crypto Craig, so I've been, I've been with Craig for a long time. We used to be uh, admins in DeFi Dudes and with uh, Crypto Vo, Lucio, and so many more. So they, he actually said, uh, look, guys, there's so many things going on right now. We're trying to be more transparent to people, but when you look at what's happening, it's too much. And it's really, really hitting hard on us as uh, YouTubers when we come out with projects, all right? So I think that I should actually ask George, since George is well known in the space, a uh, good reputation with whatever which he's doing for the community, with all that this project is bringing out. So he went to George and asked so that George can actually create a miner for him. And George says, no, I can't do that. So why don't you learn and do your own, then I will just actually help you. That's how Craig started with his first project, which was the Cake of Fortune, which is still running until now. And he came up with a second one. And I came up as well with one of the minor, which is the USDT cash flow, which is running as well. And we came up with the Farm of Fortune. So the main uh, idea which we had, we just wanted to create a safe space for everybody to invest right whereby you don't have to worry in the next day when you wake up your funds are gone so according to the trust which we have in the community we're trying to create a safe environment for everybody to invest and feel uh safe uh when you put your money into the farm so when you look at that i know for sure so many people didn't want to support it because it's just a smaller community and uh and it's been growing recently. And when you look at the TVL, it's really, really growing. That could also be uh, another trend of uh, projects which are which are going to come. But so what I can say, if you find any folk of uh, the Farm of Fortune, I can definitely tell you that you need to be careful when you invest in there because you don't know exactly the mindset of people who are behind the projects. and. Uh, when you look at Craig and everybody in the team, we've got uh, a good reputation in the space. So people trust us with the funds, which are actually going to the mirror pools and uh, uh, syrup pool to create, to actually generate extra income to come and feed into the TVL. So because when you make your deposits, all right, uh, actually 50% of your deposits goes into uh uh, the syrup pool way we can generate an extra income to bring back into the TVL. And it's 42% which stays in the contract and 8% goes to the developers and for marketing and feeds the previous project which we had already in the past. So since we launched our ecosystem, the Fortune Hunters, from the first project, second, third projects, there's no one who has been paid, right? All the money from the dev fees and everything have been put into a syrup pool where we're generating more and feedback into the contract to help everybody to ROI. We're trying our best to make a zero Ponzi uh, farm, but we cannot say right now it's zero Ponzi because we can only say it's zero Ponzi when once we reach the 200 days mark and say, okay, guys, this is a 200 days. We have made this much and everybody as ROI and they're in profits and we can say we actually made a zero Ponzi farm. So there's so many to talk about. Um, we uh, can see we almost like in an hour of uh, our uh, chats. I don't want to talk much and take time for everybody. So may, probably we can try and talk about it so next time. I can invite Craig as well onto the chat so that he can explain as well and talk more about it if you guys would like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like you said, we're probably going to try and keep today's episode about one hour. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got a ton of project. I mean, a ton of projects and a ton of different topics that uh, you know we want to cover. Uh, we've got a bunch of ideas for this podcast in in terms of you know evolving. Um, we want to bring on um, you know owners of, of of big projects on to speak about um, you know any upcoming stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, we've got tons of ideas of how we want to expand on this podcast and a ton of different ideas and topics to talk about. Uh, today, I think we touched a lot on, well, at least we took, all of us had something to say about crypto security. 
Um, I hope some of you guys who are watching this uh, maybe learned a thing or two. Um, and I think definitely in a future episode, we can dig more into depth in crypto security because I'm sure there's, um, you know, stuff a lot of us YouTubers ad ad advice that we can give to everybody. So we've also got um, that to talk about in the future as well. Um, so, yeah, just before we go, um, also, yeah, to the people that are watching, um, in, the in the descriptions of everybody's video, there will be a link to everybody's channel. So you can find all our channels on there if, if, you, um, if, if uh, you want to. And then, um, yeah, so just before we go, is there anybody that wants to have any final words? <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> Patrick say. Hello, go for it. No, I was thinking in the future, if people, they have questions, they can leave them in the Telegram group and we can cover them in the in the next week when we're going to have a, a new video yeah, definitely, call definitely a good idea if there is any uh, we projects are, we are but we they want uh, we have a look or to talk about them uh, whatever the query that you might have you know you can put in it on a on a chat and then we can discuss about it we can review the projects and uh, we're going to give you give you our honest opinion and uh, how, how how everything is supposed to be you know we're just going to give you our opinion and then you you will have to make your own conclusion there but yeah definitely uh many more podcasts to come uh, with more projects to talk about and security stuff educational stuff because you know crypto is not all about money we have to educate ourselves and as cameras are getting smarter too so we have to stay alert and uh yeah we have to avoid getting rugged and lose our funds so we gotta educate ourselves I just want to say as well, uh, for anyone who is participating, invite your friends to the group because in future we're willing to do different giveaways for community and just share, spread the word about DeFi, our opinions. And if you don't want to lose our channel, just pin our channel to the top of your Telegram to be staying updated about future MAs and so on. Yeah, thanks for today, guys. Right. Thank you so much. Actually, a, a good idea which you just gave. So, um, we gonna take we gonna talk actually behind uh, doors, closed doors. And uh, I think uh, what I can say probably maybe for the next one, if we can invite uh, Craig and then he can talk to us about the Farm of Fortune, and then I will talk to them so that they can actually we can sponsor the next. Uh, 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 podcast which you're going to have so we can have a giveaway on that one when we invite him over and then we're going to invite a lot of people also to come on board so some people can also uh, actually participate in the giveaway that will be a good thing actually a good start to go with yeah yeah i think that's an awesome idea mate uh yeah anyone else got any last words Okay, yeah. So Thank we'll you. See you later. Today. So uh, do keep a lookout for when the next episode will be next week. Uh, we will be letting you guys know about that. And uh, until then, have a great rest.